And what we are seeing is a little bit more confidence returning to the markets and the risks, uh, I guess, fading to the background. That's always a positive sign for stocks. Julia Lee, welcome back to Dukascopy TV. A pleasure as always to receive you. My pleasure. Thanks, Natalie. Okay, so let's rewind ever so slightly to last month when we last spoke. And you did mention your feeling that markets really were in an oversold position. Have we seen some sort of respite or are markets very much still, still in that bear hug? Look, the Australian market underperformed in the month of February. We were down 2.5% and that means the year to date the market's fallen 7%. That compares to, say, the US stock market, which is down about 3.2% in the year to date, or the FTSE, which is down only 1.4%. And the reason for that is the exposure to Asian markets. If we have a look at China, that market is down substantially, down by 25% in the year to date. And if we have a look at Japan, there's losses of 16%. And it's, it's Australia's exposure to China, which has caused that underperformance. I think the market is still looking oversold, which means that March will probably be a good month. And what we are seeing is a little bit more confidence returning to the markets and the risks, uh, I guess, fading to the background. That's always a positive sign for stocks. What are some of the concerns then that clients are sort of voicing to you or they have in their mindset then when approaching the year ahead? Well, I guess the key thing is the declines that we've seen so far for a lot of the banking stocks, which are a core part of clients' portfolios. You know, some of these big banks have fallen one third from the peak. So it can be quite difficult to navigate conditions like this. And of course, commodity based stocks where we have seen strong losses uh, historically. I guess the key for clients is not to think so much about what has happened, but what will happen in the year ahead. And I think this year is one where clients do need to be a bit more nimble around timing. The good news is there's probably entry points at the moment for the banks as well as Telstra and some of the other blue chip companies out there. And the key for clients is to buy low and sell high. It's difficult to do in volatile conditions. And most people tend to do the opposite. When panic is at a maximum, they tend to sell stocks. But really Really, you have to sort of take the emotion out of it and be more nimble in terms of timing this year. Are there concerns then if we've seen that huge commodities drop off, we've seen the financial sector fall off that peak as well, could we see a bit of an exodus possibly into investors taking cash positions over risking it in that, that volatile equities market? Well, we certainly saw a move into cash as well as gold in the first two months of the year. I think over the next few months, some of those, uh, I guess, that pessimism will ease. And traditionally for gold, you know, January, February tends to be a good uh, time of year. And then by March, we see an easing off in the performance of gold. For clients, once again, I think there will be swings between extreme pessimism and extreme optimism in the market. So it is about having a look at some of those indicators and having a look at some of those conditions. But I think the strange thing about the fears around the market and macro conditions as well is that centers from the east. The west is still looking very strong. The US is still looking relatively strong. The fear is stemming from China and that's the area to be watching. Well, with that said, I mean, obviously, locally, reporting season is over. China, we are seeing sort of risk on risk off sort of um, attachment to Chinese activity as well. But what really, locally speaking, is that next kind of clear driver for market sentiment? Look, I think we have to see stability coming out of China. And while the market has become a little bit immune in the risk on sentiment that we are currently seeing, as soon as it becomes a risk off environment, it will be once again very much in focus. So some stability in terms of China, some direction, I guess, in terms of the devaluation of the Chinese currency and the impact that that's going to have on the global market. Um, and just some confidence that China is able to manage uh, the slower growth environment that it is seeing. Julia Lee, many thanks for the update. Thanks, Natalie. Julia Lee there from Bell Direct giving us her insight into the market year ahead. That is all we've got time for right now. I'm Natalie MacDonald. You've been watching Sydney Direct on Dukascopy TV. Until next time, it's goodbye.